This is Mercenary Force for the Game Boy. This game is one of the very earliest games to come out for the original Game Boy. Uh, it came out less than a year after the Game Boy was first released in the US. And I had a really hard time putting into words how I feel about this game, which I'll try to explain later. So Mercenary Force is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up. <laughs> Literally every other shoot-em-up that I know of, you play as a spaceship shooting things in space. This game is unique in that it takes place in old-timey Japan, and instead of a spaceship, you play as a team of mercenaries defending a village from intruders and various mythological creatures. It's really clever. I love this idea. It's such a fresh take on the genre. Uh, not only is the setting unique, but also the way you play it. Uh, you don't just control one character. You literally play as a team of characters. Uh, there's five character types, uh, each with a different attack. You start the game by selecting who will be on your team, which means every time you play, you can have a unique experience. Uh, I like the way this game looks. Uh, the sprites and the characters look nice, and rarely do enemies blend into the background. Unfortunately, there are some times when enemies blend in with the backgrounds, uh, giving them an unfair shot at you, uh, but it doesn't happen too often. And after it happens once, I usually know to look for it, so it's not too big of a deal. <laughs> you know, I really appreciate how this game fully embraces the Japanese feel. Uh, this came out in the early 90s, when companies felt it was absolutely necessary to make sure American kids felt like they were playing in America and not in Japan. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Maru's Mission. <laughs> anyway, the setting, the graphics, the music, and even the box art are all great, while fully embracing the original ancient Japanese feel of the game. Also, shout out to my favorite enemy in the game. These little skeletons are adorable. I like the music uh, and the controls. Uh, the game feels nice and plays nice. So why didn't I fall in love with this game? So let's talk about player choice. In a good game, the player makes choices, and those choices directly determine whether they win or lose. It's pretty simple. Part of the fun of playing a game is learning about the choices that can be made and trying to make the right choices to master the game. This game, Mercenary Force, has so many choices. From the moment you start the game, you are given a choice of which characters to add to your team. There are five types, each with their own attack patterns. You can have a team of up to four mercenaries, but you can also choose to only have three, two, or even a one-person team. You can choose to have a variety of mercenary types on your team, or you can double them up, or you can even fill your team entirely with a single type. Uh, you can choose how your team is arranged on screen during gameplay at any time by pressing the B button. You can choose to have a team that's spread out vertically to, you know, spread out your attacks. You can form a tight square group or a couple other formations. Uh, and the characters all have this, <laughs> this little AI that lets them move around the landscape and stay in formation on the Game Boy. It's so cool. I was really impressed by it. Uh, you can choose who is the leader of the team which is the character that stays near the front of the group and possibly takes the most damage. Uh, you can also choose to change the leader at any time uh, during gameplay by pressing the select button. You can choose to spend the coins you pick up on extra health at the shops scattered throughout the stages, or you can choose to save up for a new mercenary in between stages. You can choose to fire on the incoming enemies nonstop, killing them as soon as they enter the play field and preventing them from getting a shot in, but in doing so, you'll most likely miss out on the coins they drop since they disappear pretty quickly. You can choose to perform a super attack by pressing the A and B buttons together. Each character type has a different special attack, for example, killing all enemies on screen, but at the cost of that character's death. And finally, the choice of simply how you will move your characters around the screen during gameplay. Oh, there is a lot of choices. Now, I love this idea. When I found out about everything this game has to offer, it blew my mind. 
and it's all in a little Game Boy game. The whole idea of a formation of characters that can be rearranged on the fly, fighting through Japanese villages, the money system, it's all so cool. But here's the problem. None of the choices really matter. Or at least, I couldn't figure out how to make them matter when I played. I tried so hard to study all the different attack types, uh, the ideal way to arrange my players for maximum defense, agility, and attack, uh, start the game, and I would pretty much make it to the same spot every time before dying. The amount of effort I put into it just never showed that big of a difference during my actual gameplay. Even worse, there's a strategy where you just select a single character on your team, giving you the smallest hitbox possible to dodge most attacks. Making everything about the teams, the formations, the leader, the special attacks, all useless. <sighs> I really want to love this game. And I'm not saying it's a bad game. It's just a game that I can't seem to figure out. Maybe I will, someday. So, what would I change to make this game more fun? Well, there's some basic changes. Uh, I'd adjust the economy. Either make health refills cheaper, or make dropped coins worth more. This gives the player more reward for the coins they collect. Um, I'd add automatic firing, or at least better automatic firing. A shoot 'em up should never make the player press a button for each shot. Uh, ugh. The game does have some form of automatic firing, uh, but it's much more beneficial to keep smacking the attack button. It's exhausting. Uh, let's see. I would have how each character. I would have the game show how each character type attacks on the character select screen before you hire them. Uh, it's described in the instruction manual, but I forget every time I start the game. Or worse, I'm into the game and I hire the wrong character because <laughs> I can't remember who does what. Just a simple full screen pop up showing the character's in game sprite doing their in game attack uh, with the text, you know, A for yes, B for no. That would be perfect. It's simple to implement and do exactly what would be needed. But as for the gameplay itself, Unfortunately, there's too many times where, as a player, I felt cheated. Where I said, oh come on, how was I supposed to dodge that? In a good game, the player should never feel cheated. Any loss should feel like the player's fault. Now, I like being in control of a team of mercenaries. That's a really cool idea. I like being able to choose uh, character and attack types. I like the gameplay, but the stages are too cramped for the amount of enemies and bullets on the screen. As soon as an enemy appears, I need to kill it, because if I don't, it will fire an attack, and as soon as a single bullet is on the screen, it's almost guaranteed that someone on my team is going to get hurt. So I guess my biggest issue is how difficult it is to dodge enemy attacks. And that got me thinking, <laughs> what if there was a button you could hold to make your team huddle together into the space of a single of the single lead character. Your team would be out there blasting away at the enemies, and at the press of a button, they'd huddle together, making the hitbox the size of a single character instead of all four, giving the game an offense, defense, back and forth style of gameplay. But it is the Game Boy, and we're quickly running out of buttons to use for all these controls. Now, I spent a lot of time thinking about how this could all work, and I think I got it figured out. <laughs> I'm really proud of this, so check this out. What if the A button is still used for attacks, like it currently is, the Start button is still Pause, and the Select button is still to cycle through who the lead character is, but the big change is what the B button does. In my imaginary setup for this game, the B button will now cause the characters to quickly move together into a little defensive huddle. This means you get the benefit of a small hitbox of only one character size, but the player can still enjoy the benefits of choosing a big team of four different characters. And 
I'm assuming it wouldn't even be too much extra code to implement this. Uh, the game already has uh, little algorithms for your NPC teammates to move to a specific location. So by holding the B button, just have the code tell the teammates that their new destination is the position of the lead character. Now, I know what you're thinking. Dave, what's to stop the player from holding down the B button and staying in a huddle 100% of the time? Well, simple. You wouldn't be able to attack while in a huddle. The player wouldn't uh, be able to attack, which means they won't be able to collect coins, and they could easily become overrun with enemies if they don't stay on the offensive. Yeah, so it would all balance out. But Dave, what about the former functionality of the B button? You know, being able to change the formation of, uh, of your team. Would that just not be possible anymore? Well, yes, it would still be possible. So instead of using the B button to cycle through formations, the player would now change formations by holding the select button and tapping one of the directions on the D-pad. For example, up to arrange them in a vertical line, down to spread them out into like a star shape, left to form into a square, and right to form a sort of arrow shape. It's the four uh, orientations that are already in the game. Now I was worried that using the select plus the d-pad, select button plus the d-pad, would be a little too much for an action game. But remember, even the way the game as it is now uses the select button, the select button's already used as, used as it is now, and having the four formations tied to the four directions on the d-pad gets rid of all that wasted time cycling through the different formations by using the b button. Whew. I love this idea so much. I don't think it'll ever be implemented, but it was really fun to come up with, and I think it would be fun to play. Anyway, back to the original game. In summary, Mercenary Force is incredibly ambitious. It has good graphics, good music, and a great setting, uh, but it tries to combine a ton of strategy into a fast-paced shoot-em-up and sadly, I don't think it really worked. Or maybe I'm just really bad at this game, I don't know. <laughs> In the process of writing this review, I discovered there's actually a sequel to this game, Mercenary Force 2, that was only released in Japan. And it's a book in a video game. Like literally, like you choose your own adventure. I have no idea why someone decided the sequel to this action game was going to be a book. But hey, this happens in it. <laughs>